morning everybody and welcome to another little tutorial today i'm going to use a limited palette of colors and i just want to show you how you can make a very simple but effective design and i have to say this is using one of the new unicorn stamps from lavinia stamps um, and really i've done this little tutorial tracy thompson asked me if i could do a tutorial on this card design so tracy this one's for you I do like to do clean and simple designs. As you know, I like designs where I use lots of colour and lots of techniques, but sometimes it's nice just to strip it back, do something nice and fresh. But also, if you notice, we have got some little touches of colour, but also we've got white space. And the crispness of the stamping really shows through. Now, the way I approach this is probably not the way that you would think. I tend to do things, um, when I started crafting years ago, I've got to admit, I'm not a very good stamper. And I do have problems like most ladies out there. So I just sort of get ways around it and so try to come up with ways. And I like to pass these on at workshops. And what I'm going to suggest we do is actually stamp our main figures first and then create the scene around it. Now, the reason I'm doing this is I know some ladies can spend a while creating a scene. Then when it comes to stamping, if the stamping's not perfect, they may have to throw it away. They may have to redo it. And they've wasted almost not only the time, but the card. And also it sort of morally it gets you down. You just feel if something's not perfect. You know that thing, ladies, don't you? We all... We're just not very good with our own work and we almost need to just have more confidence in ourselves and our ability. So for me, this is the way I would approach it. So I'll just pop that card to one side. I've got a piece of card here. I'm using the Multifarious card. And again, when it comes to a design, sometimes when we get new stamps and we have to think of ways of using them that almost isn't obvious and that sort of will inspire people to want to buy them and sometimes it's nice just to actually use the stamp as it is so I've got this lovely unicorn stamp here and I'm going to ink up with Versafine Claire as you know it's my preferred ink especially for silhouette stamps and again ladies lots of light tapping and make sure that you do get plenty of ink on the stamp Sometimes the reason for our stamps not stamping perfectly is just the fact that we haven't put enough ink. Especially if you haven't got much confidence in stamping, you tend to rush it. And if it's one thing I would say to everybody, if you haven't got a lot of confidence, slow it down. And that goes against the grain, I know, but honestly, you will get a better result. And again, as you know, for me, I'm a little tinker and I do catch these odd little bits of the stamp and it's worth just having a minute to go round so that I don't over stamp with these edges right and checking the lights yeah we look to have plenty of ink on there so again I'm going to place I'm going to reckon about here I'm going to press him down and again this is the bit don't rush. Let that ink, I know I say this every time, but honestly, let the ink soak into the card. I had um, a Lavinia retreat at the weekend. It was lovely, actually. A lovely group of uh, people in Cumbria. We had a fantastic two days. But there was a lady there, been stamping for years, and she was, Joe, my stamp, it's, it's not working properly. So I said, let's have a go, and we stamped it. And again, she popped the stamp down, lifted it up straight away. So we redid it, holding that stamp, and again, not rushing, just taking your time, and we got a perfect result. You know, we do forget, and we do tend to be in a rush to lift them up. So, let's hope that our lovely little unicorn now, I mean, not the end of the world, if there's any bits missing, you know, we'll just get a paintbrush, add them in. But obviously, you do really want a good result. So let's lift up. Yeah. There we go. So we've got our unicorn. Look at the detail with the hair. So what we're going to do is now, we're going to stamp Rory. Same thing. Lots of... And again, I'm taping, taking the ink pad to the stamp. 
The other thing is with your ink pad, try and use different bits. I've noticed a lot of ladies just sort of use the centre of the ink pad, but then you'll have lots of ink round the edge. So do try and use all the bits of your ink pad. I know it's obvious, but often it's the obvious things that we don't pay attention to. And again, I'm just going to catch these edges. Now let's place Rory so he looks like he's just reaching up to pet our unicorn. And we'll hold him down. Give him a good press. Now I have to say, those of you who've watched my YouTubes before, you'll know that my pet companion, my crafty dog Eric, who, Black Labrador, he's five, he's sat under my table now. Um, he's been poorly recently and so he had to have some test done under uh, anaesthetic and he had some x-rays and bless him his hips oh the shot the left one was nearly the head of the uh, femur was nearly out of its socket so um so he's on medication he's on uh, little walks rather than long walks no chasing his tennis ball for the minute and he's gonna have some hydrotherapy he may need a hip replacement but we'll see how we go but in himself he's fine so Thank you to all those ladies that messaged me and asked how he was. Right, let's see how Rory's done. Yeah, there we go. So now we've got Rory and we've got the unicorn. What I would suggest, because we're using a Versafine, it's a slow drying ink, so we'll give it a blot. Because I'm now going to come in and add the landscape around, if I didn't blot it, it may smudge. And if that happened, I think I would cry. You could use your heat gun, but to be honest, I find it easier just to give it a little bit of a bit of a rub with my copy of paper. And what we want to do, we want to add some of the landscape. Now, what I'm going to use for this is I like um, a minimum palette. Because I'm going to do the sky, I tend to use a Distress Oxide Faded Jeans. I, I love this colour. So I'll pop that next to me. And then... In it, I like to mix a little bit of purple. I don't like to just do the sky in blue. You just get a better result. So I'm going to go for the wilted violet. And yes, Karen, you have introduced me. It is the purple phase. And to put them on, I'm going to use a couple of brushes. Um, stencil brushes, if you've got them, they're good for this. Now, we'll start with the landscape. So I'm just going to take my piece of copy of paper tear it towards me and if I've been really clever look I will have torn it so I can get that'll do nicely I'm going to ink up my blue brush and what I'm going to do is also ink up my purple brush so that they're both ready not too much ink I don't want to overdo it copy of paper and I'm just going to go straight across. I'm not going to drag it down like we would do with a sponge. I'm going to go straight across. I'm not going to re-ink. Now if I hold that and show you, look what we've got. Now can you see I'm just missing and I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I don't like that if I'm just missing but I'll go in and correct that later. I don't want to move this because I just want to add some purple to the whole thing just to change that colour tone. And if I lift it off and show you, can you see how I just love that mixture of the blue and the purple? Now, I'm working to the side just because, again, that's the way I work. Now, where we've got this little bit here missing, I just want to catch some colour there. I don't like the fact that his back leg is off the ground because that just wouldn't happen. So, I'm just going to add some blue. And then some purple and see if we can get rid of that. And I'm also, what I'm going to do is if you pinch the brush like this, get some colour. Can you see you almost get a line? If I show you on here, look, you can actually make a line. And I want to add a little bit more detail for my shadow. And I do want to drag it down there. So under the unicorn and then under Rory. Again, just to make it more believable. There we go. Nice bit of shadow building up there. So the next thing we're going to add 
the moon so i've cut out a circle well <laughs> sort of a circle out of acetate i've done the thing of putting my posca mark on it so i can see it because obviously with acetate being see-through you know what it's like we put it down and like most other things in our craft room we can't find them i'm going to pop that about there i want sort of rory's head in it don't want it too low but just to frame the scene nicely and i'm going to start with the blue and again i'm going to do that sweeping motion across because i'm thinking sort of cloud sky i don't want to drag it round like we would normally do I'm just going to go straight across i'm just going to move my finger and then at the bottom the same thing don't worry that i'm going across where i've stamped because i've stamped and it's a solid in my versafine claire the distress will just go over the top of it you won't be able to tell that you haven't done the background first and stamped on top it doesn't affect the black at all next i'm going to come in with the purple not too much and i'm can you see i'm not going too far across just sort of that sort of distance i don't want the whole thing this color if i want to check what it looks like lift it up yeah and that's enough for me i don't want to overdo the color i just want that hint of this scene here now a little tip if you want to pop a cloud going across the sky so if i show you this is your brush if you pinch it like this can you see i'm fanning the brush out and i'm going to pick up some blue and then I'm just going to go drag it straight across the sky. And I just want it to look a little bit like we've got a cloud floating in front of that moon. Got a wee bit more colour. Right, if I lift that up to the camera, can you see, does that give the idea that we've just got that little bit of cloud? And we'll just add another one there because I just think it looks a bit funny, just one. Again, so the moon's not that bright. Again, we're just trying to make it look a bit more like a scene, a bit more realistic. Now, we're going to stamp this lovely new foliage, and I think it's called Red Leaves. Beautiful, I adore this. Now, you could stamp it in black, but for me, that would be too harsh. And I love the tones that we've got here. I also love using mixing colours on my stamps. So, for me, I need to turn this this way. Again, it's just the way I work. So I'm going to take the stamp, ink up with the blue, and then I'm just going to add a little bit of purple. Don't worry, because we've got felt ink pads here, won't contaminate the ink pad, you'll be fine. And then I just want to stamp one in the middle here. Do you look, can you tell? I seem to have got to, a bit of oxide all over my hands today. I think I need to go and wash my hands when I've done this. Lovely, I like that. Now, in with the blue again, add some purple, and we'll just go for one at the side. Alter the height, you don't want them all the same height. Yeah, and, and I love the colour tones here. So this one I'm going to do blue first, and I want to be heavier with the purple with this. I want it to be mainly purple, a little bit of blue peeping through. See if I can get this a different height to both of them. Maybe just catch it there. Yeah, look at look at the detail in that stamp. Beautiful, isn't it? If I stamp it on here, look to show you the whole thing. So we put the blue on. A little bit of the purple. Give it a good. Remember, this is an oxide you're stamping with. How beautiful is that? I just love the mixture of colours on there. Right, we'll get rid of that. So, for me, when we're nearly done. In fact, we'll bring that back in. What I want to do now is just add my black line around. So, just, I could mat and layer onto black card, but A, I'd have to buy the black card, and if you post in, it, it can add weight to it. So, for me, the easiest way to almost add my faux matting and layering is just to take a black um, sharpie pen you could use a posca if you've got one or a felt tip my preferred one is the sharpie and i'm just catching i'm just using my metal ruler catching the edge and also what it does is it frames it nicely and because i've stamped in black it helps to add black to the design i could stamp a sentiment 
in black. I do like to create some designs that I don't have sentiments at the time. And they're what I call my emergency ones. So that especially something like this, it's quite generic. Oh, sorry, by the way, do clean your ruler when you're finished just to get that black off. Um, I do like designs like this, as I say, that are quite generic. So it means that I will leave it. Let's move it out of the way. And I would add a sentiment depending on what I needed to send it for. I mean, this could be a birthday. could be a get well. It could be thinking of you. It could be thank you. So, like I say, I'll leave it without. Last little thing, I'm just going to add these little splatters. So, for this, I could add the purple. But for me, I've got quite a purpley tinge going on. And I want to bring the blue out. So, I'm just going to move my copy paper out of the way. And to put the lid on my purple ink, put some of my blue ink on my mat and then spritz some water. Then out with the fan brush. And I want to try and control where I get these. I don't want them all over. I certainly don't want them over Rory. So I'm going to go for this area first here. So a few little splats there. And I'm going to turn my card design round. I like to work in opposite corners, just the flow. I'm just going to add a tiny few just here. So I'll put that to one side. Just mop this up first because you know what it's like. If I don't, I'll end up putting my card straight in it on my hand and then it will be everywhere. Then we'll need an emergency butterfly and I don't think this card would look right with a butterfly. So if I hold that for you. Now, I know you could add glitter to this, you could add gel pen, but for me, I just liked the actual design as it is. I wanted it without glitter, without gel, just for me, just clean and simple and pure crispness. And that's just my take on it. So I'll leave this with you to look for a while. I'll let you ponder over this. Thanks, Tracy, for asking to see how it was made. If any of you want any YouTubes on any of the cards I put on, please let me know. Okay, everybody, take care. Love and hugs. Bye.